for this last remainder problem, let's take a look at a problem where we sort of have to combine our uh, algebraic translation skills for remainders with being able to find patterns and generate a lot of numbers. And so this problem here says, what is the remainder when positive integer x is divided by 6? And so if we are dividing by 6, it might seem like, uh, just based on the question itself, that uh, there are infinite possibilities for what a remainder could be, because there are infinite possibilities for what x could be. But remember, uh, we are always restricted to what our remainders could be. And so here, if we are dividing by 6, we know our remainder can only be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And so we only have 6 options to start. Uh, even though x can be anything, our remainders cannot be anything. So other than that, there is not much we can do. Um, here I actually might delete my data sufficiency answer choices, which, again, should not be a problem because you should have these memorized. Just to give myself some more space. Okay, so let's see if we can translate each of these statements. So statement one says when x plus 3 is divided by 3, the remainder is 2. And so uh, here they're saying not x plus, not x, but x plus 3 is equal to 3. And we'll say our quotient, we'll just say y. So 3y plus 2, which means x, because ultimately we just care about x, should be equal to 3y minus 1. So if we wanted to generate a bunch of values for x, uh, we should be able to do that here. So if we start with uh, when uh, y is equal to 1, so x is equal to 3 times 1 minus 1, which is 2, uh, then when y is 2, x would be 3 times 2 minus 1, so that would be 5. So it looks like we're going up by 3 each time, so here are some possible values for x. So if we want to know what the, the remainder is when we divide by 6, let's see what we get. So 2 divided by 6, that would be 0, remainder 2. Uh, 5 divided by 6, that would be 0, remainder 5. Uh, 8 would be uh, 1 remainder 2, and so it looks like we have a pattern here uh, alternating between 2s and 5s. Uh, here would be 1 remainder 5. 14 over 6 would be 2 remainder 2. 17 over 6 would be 2 remainder 5. 20 over 6 would be 3 remainder 2. 23 over 6 would be 3 remainder 5. Uh, so here, uh, in statement one, uh, there's only, uh, it's insufficient because there are more than, there's more than one option for what our remainder could be. Uh, but to note that we only have two options here. So we narrowed down our options from six all the way to two, uh, just with this first statement. So if you're sort of thinking ahead, if I had five seconds left on my test, I would probably guess, uh, C as my answer because it doesn't look like we need that much more information uh, to get a single remainder. Uh, the first mate statement by itself, you know, cut our possibilities uh, down by a factor of three. Um, what about our second statement? So this says when x plus five is divided by four, the remainder is two. And so here we're saying not x, but x plus five is equal to four. And we have a different quotient here. Uh, we don't necessarily know they have the same quotient, so we got to say x plus 5 is equal to 4z plus 2, which means x would be equal to 4z minus 3. If we were to do the same thing, so if uh, I would say, you know, this is x1, meaning this is the x from our first statement. So 
what values for x do we get from our second statement? So say x sub 2 here. Then we want to find again some possible remainders. Uh, so when z is equal to 1, uh, x is equal to 1. Uh, when z is equal to 2, uh, 4 times 2 is 8 minus 3, so x would be equal to 5. So we're going up by 4 each time. So 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, 25, 29. That should be good for now. So let's find what some of our remainders could be. So 1 divided by 6 is 0 remainder 1. 5 divided by 6 is 0 remainder 5. So already that's enough to say insufficient because we get two different remainders here. Uh, let's keep following this pattern or let's see, keep seeing if there is a pattern to our remainders. Uh, so 9 divided by 6 would be 1 remainder 3. So we got a weird pattern here so far. Uh, 1, 5, 3, 13 divided by 6 would be 2 remainder 1. 17 divided by 6 would be 2 remainder 5. 21 divided by 6 would be Three remainder three. Uh, so it does look like we have a pattern, this one, five, three pattern. 25 divided by six, four remainder one. Uh, 29 divided by six would be four uh, remainder five. And so we want to just complete uh, our pattern here. And one more number. Uh, 33 divided by six would be five remainder. Um, so uh, we already said our second statement is insufficient because we have three options for our remainder here. So how would we, why did I write out these long lists here? Why is it useful to be able to generate a lot of examples at one time? Um, so what do we do when we look at our two statements together? Uh, so here we just got to look uh, at our values for x, but we can only use values that appeared in both of our tables and so it looks like five works uh and then what is the next one 17 works um and so note in each of these cases uh so next is five our remainder when we divide by six uh with a remainder of five um in each case here uh when x is uh, 17. We also had a remainder of 5, and so, so far it's looking uh, like this statement may end up being sufficient, and uh, I could generate some more examples here if I had to. Here as well, here we're going up by 4 each time, remember? Um, so 23 to so 29 looks like the next one that also has a remainder of five. So here I would probably stop and say this is sufficient. Um, anything else that we, looks like we get 41 looks like the next one. So, uh, 41 divided by six is what, uh, Six remainder five, right? So uh, it looks like together there's only a single possible remainder, and so this problem here uh, is a good example of why you want to be sort of organized. Uh, when you're approaching these remainder problems, uh, don't be afraid to just sort of generate examples and then brute force your way through the problem. Uh, so one and two together were sufficient, right? Because there's only a single possible remainder, uh, five. Um, so the answer is C. Those are remainder problems. Um, a little not the not the highest yield of question type, but also uh, not as scary as. Some people make them out to be sometimes. On to the next series of videos.